the video is about making the video is about making the uh, piston sleeve for the Ruger Airhawk. Uh, and prior to that, I was undergoing the stock and refinishing the stock. So here's some pictures of that before we get to the piston sleeve. So this time around, I went with the aircraft paint remover spray. Uh, somebody suggested that that's what they used. They liked it, so I tried it. And um, you spray it on, you wait a while. It gets the finish a little bit soft, and you can start scraping if you have a softer edge, uh, edge to scrape the softened. And um, the finish is on there like bomb proof. So I think I did it like three or four times, and I finally started getting somewhere with um, thin layer after thin layer of scraping this stuff down. And then finally, um, I would air dry it, and then wasn't really happy with the results so it was getting there but it wasn't getting there where I was happy with it so it, it did help though I, it just wasn't there enough so then here we switched to the citrus strip now that is okay but it has a little smell to it so in the shop here on that table that I made that fold down sliding table shooting table and now it's getting put to use so here the citrus strip, I think I did light coats of that, let it sit, come back, and brush it off. And um, over here you'll see the exhaust fan right there. So it's recommended that you have some type of exhaust. Even though it doesn't really smell, but it's when it dries and you scrape and brush that off, that's the smell that you get. So that was that, the start of the Ruger Airhawk. At this point, I didn't even get into the, the rifle itself. So, next we started to get into the rifle. And, I gotta find the things for you. Got into the rifle, and let's see. We start to take it apart at this point. And right away, you can see a plastic Delrin guide, which I was kind of surprised right there. Not that it was fitting properly, but I was just surprised that it had the Delrin. And I was actually uh, really liked the way they made the rifle. Um, took that apart there. There's another shot of it. I have to look into this. I'm not sure what's going on here. It looks kind of funny in this picture. It almost looks like there's a crack there. But I'll look into that and see what that's all about. So anyway, here we are, and it has this two-piece cocking arm. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Right there, you can see the two-piece cocking arm. And there, she's out. So it's just like a Diana 34 guide. Your trigger blocks there is your guide. Let's see. See the back end of that? And there she is. Of course the fit was not proper. So my whole goal with this rifle was like anybody else's goal is to work it, fix it up, take something to make it better. Now here's the rifle barrels block and I couldn't show you but here you can see the gap. This is a very odd feature on this rifle. It has very thick washers, barrel block washers. And then on each side of the barrel block, between the forks, you can see this big gap. And the gap's even, you just can't see it the way you're trying to, you can't photograph it. Next, I took it with the spring and everything out. I could not break this barrel open with everything outside. The spring was out. So I had it, I couldn't break it open on the bench, so I took it over and set it up here in the lathe. I mean, the, um, the, the bench vise with the blocks. And man, I just, it, it, I got it broken open and I worked it, I don't know, about 10 or 12 times it starts getting a little bit easier. So I got to look into that and see what's going on with that. It's probably just something that needs to be broken into and broken in. Next was the taking the block off. Now the Ruger has this skinny bolt and it has this little sleeve here that you got to pull out. I think they're doing it to 
save money and use up steel. I don't know why they just didn't make the bolt, but this is how they did it. So they have a sleeve, then they have a skinnier bolt that goes through the sleeve. And by the way, the nut for this on the other side was loose. And here's the thickness of that washer, which may turn out to be a good thing. I'm not sure because that's probably thick enough where you can actually make a Delrin washer if you want it. Here's the washer here, and here's the one from the other side. So, I don't know. It's a hit and miss. Play around with the gun. See what works. See what doesn't work. The metal washer's probably fine and dandy as well. I can't see that wearing away. So, anyway, with a thickness like that, you could make a Delrin washer. The other thing was the forks here were super tight. It really was hard to pull this thing off of these washers. So what they do in the factory is they must have some type of thing that spreads these a little bit because believe me, I'm telling you, it was hard to pull them off. And then um, this is the nice thing that brought us to the beginning of the video, which we are finally getting to, is the piston sleeve here is kinked. And I believe that's my fault because, I, I don't know, somehow when I got to that, that was kinked. I don't know if it was or not. But all we know is now we have to fix it and make it better. So, I, you know, this is kinked in two spots. So actually, this is a refurb. I think it was probably done that way before I got it. Um, so let's, let's move on here, right? So now we have a, a sleeve that's totally no good. So my idea was to lathe up some aluminum to fit the sleeve and to press the press those notches out. So here we are at the lathe, chucking up some aluminum to the inside dimensions to fit in here and push these notches out. But that didn't work. I did to some degree, but it did not get me a clean inner diameter on that sleeve. So next, we, chimed, uh, we cut this side down, made it thicker. So we're getting somewhere, but it's not a home run yet. And here we just have this loosely chucked up in the lathe, because now I have to punch this out. It's jammed in there, it's pushing this hump out, but it didn't do the trick. Well, back on the inside shop in the basement, I heated this up. Okay, so now we're going to try it with heating this tube up, get it soft, put the heat on it, get it red, put the punch in there. That should take care of it, shouldn't it? Well, it didn't. The spring goes in, but it's still kind of choppy. So then what I did was is ground it down inside here with a Dremel. You would think there, that's not bad. Whatever little bumps are in here, we can smooth that out and then fine sand it and be done with it. Well, after all that, it didn't work. And next, I took it back to the lathe and tried boring it out. And long story short, that didn't work because we ruined it. So this time, I'm going to make one out of aluminum. I'm going to give it a shot. Now, the whole ordeal with this is the piston sleeves are very thin. They have to fit inside the piston, and the spring has to fit inside that. So by the time you're done, it's like 27 thousandths. So here with a piece of balloon that I already had threaded and tapped. Why waste a good piece and bore it all out? I knew I could do something with this. So I found this plug. I stuck the plug in. And the idea was to then cut the plug off. Right? Like you see here. And then take it and make it thinner by machining it back more so that the plug that's in there is very thin that's going to be the bottom where the spring hits so now let's see if we can get the outside of the diameter of this aluminum piece to where it needs to be that's what we're doing here well now we have the outside working just great it's in the sleeve so it looks like it might just work, but we're not done yet, so now, what do we have to do? Well, now we have to bore the inside out. And here's where it gets tricky. 
because you're dealing with aluminum and um, by the time you get done the boring the aluminum is going to be very thin needless to say after all this effort I wasn't really keen on the aluminum after I got into it this far because after all aluminum's kind of soft you got the force of the cocking rod it probably would have worked if everything was put in properly I mean you could use plastic I was thinking about making Delrin but I didn't want to have to worry about the Delrin somehow tearing down the road I wanted something that was going to be bulletproof anyway so we're back to the beginning here we're going to have to go to the next block of pictures so the aluminum did not work out next we go to some galvanized steel that I found. Let's just begin here. I found some galvanized steel and it's weird trying to machine galvanized steel pole. So this tube actually worked out pretty good. I was surprised. The spring would not go inside which told me that I knew I could bore it and the outside was too big to go in the piston so I could use this, machine it down and bore it and that's what brings us to this part of the venture. So here we are boring the inside out now. We're trying to get the inside done first because we know we can get the outside. The thing about doing this was the, and there's that piece of material, that's what it looks like. It's that bumpy, slippery, hard, very hard galvanized tube, which really made this actually ideal for making a piston sleeve. So, first time around, I kept boring this piece out and boring it out and boring it out and it had to go slow I couldn't dig in deep um, to me it seemed like if I tried to get a d deeper bite on it somewhere in the middle she would skip off and it just wasn't working uh, excuse me I, I don't know if that's because it's galvanized and it's just that type of material so I worked with it slowly and I bored it in then I bored it out um, and then I got it and actually, to be honest with you, I almost was ready to give up because I really didn't think it was going to get there. And I put the spring in thinking the spring was going to push out the steel, and it didn't, the, the little cut-off shavings. And just then I was going to give up, and I decided, you know what, let me clean it out. Go ahead. So I cleaned it out with a spray, and the spring went right in perfect. So then I knew I had it. So here we are, the inside's done, now we're going to do the outside, right? Lay this down. Um, so far, so good. Making some passes here. No big deal, typical lathe work. And now you see here, we have it inside the piston. Okay, and it's a nice fit, it's not jammed in there. It could have been a little tighter, I could have laid a little less, but it is what it is. It's, it's not bad though, it's what I would consider um, noteworthy and good. And so here are, my idea was for the next phase is to take some steel, uh, I better back up there, some, some, some nice steel here, and oh, what are we doing here? Well, I'll show you that part later, but right here, here's the actual piston sleeve, now we're going to we are cutting the notches in for the bottom of this piston sleeve because you know how these things are the spring has to sit on those on the bent over piece of the piston sleeve to keep it from coming out of the piston so here I have a mark and I have the Dremel ready to cut up to the mark and then the cuts are ready to be made and here we are with the cut pieces so getting back to that steel piece, I, I made this little thing up here, just machined so that this fits here with a little bit of space. The idea is to slip it over here into this area, and I can use this edge here as a clean break and bend over so it's uniform. So here it is again, and nothing's bent over yet. So here we go, I have this pipe here, and I just took that, put it in there, and smacked it with a hammer, very enough to get the pieces to start to bend. And I got them all bent, and now I Rube Gerberg, the, the Rube, how do you say it? Rube 
Go Goldberg. Tape this up here to keep this on, and then over here I start to cut in front of this. So like I said earlier, I machined this piece, so the idea was once this is folded over and you cut this piece off, now you're going to want to have to take a rod through here and push this piece back out this way when this is all done. So here we are. I'm cutting it off. There's the bent over pieces. We're almost there, but we're not quite. And here I am trying to take this rod, go through here, and punch that piece out that I made. And believe me, you know what? It gave me a problem. So there it is. You can see it better that way. So we're almost there. I got it out. What I actually had to do is set this all back up and flip it around and, 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 and board out some more because the piece was never, I got the piece down to here and it just wasn't coming out so I had to bore this out some more. So anyway, here we are here, the ends are folded over. It looks good, but it's not ready yet. So now, that's what it looks like. Now we have to make a piece like this here to go inside here and make sure that all this stuff in here on the inside is flat and perfectly flat and the hole wasn't big enough and another thing about this here this is that galvanized steel pole it was actually strong enough I had to bore that hole open right here because this Chinese piston stem is actually fairly thick it's nice and heavy duty the whole thing is really nice it's amazing what they put into their, their rifle. I bought that rifle for $49 at Midway USA, a refurbished Airhawk. So here we go with this here. This needs to be bored open some. Whatever, it, it needs to be widened. So took the very bit, went into it easy, no problem. She took it like a champ. I made the hole wider. And now I have here the piece that's going to go in the tube here up and we're going to flatten this all out much better on the inside working our way out. There's just another picture of it. So a little project like this you're always constantly you know shaping something and working something. It's not that you're just taking some stuff down. So here we are with our piece we're going to stick it in here and hammer it down um, and that's what we did. And here we are, if you take a look, you can see that piece is still inside there. But now everything's nice and flat here, and everything's going to be nice and flat on the inside. Here we are inside the piston, again. And now we have this excess here. Had this been aluminum, it would have been probably too flimsy. Anyway, this galvanized steel is great. I'm glad I stuck with this project because now I know if I ever get in a bind, I can make my own piston sleeve. It's nice to know. So here I just marked it because it needs to be cut. And we're cutting it. And we're not getting greedy with it, right? We're not going to use the parting tool. We're just going to face it off. At this point, we don't want to do anything to ruin this, pro uh, this part. Because believe me, it was a long haul to get there. So let's see, we're almost there. What I did is I went close to the mark, took it out, tried it, and then put it back. And now here we are, the finished product. And the only thing I have to do now is make a washer for the inside. It actually had one on the bench, but the washer was not proper. It fit, but it wasn't proper. So this will just take, be taken out and fine sanded down. I also fine sanded, let's see, where are we? I fine sanded inside the tube after it was all done with, what was it, 320 grit, then 400. Uh, anyway, that's the only problem. If you ever get in a jam and you're going to make yourself a piston sleeve, you have to go through all this mess. But, you know... You can buy a lathe to have it sit and gives you a project to do, and, and that's how we got into it. So all in all, I'm just very happy with this. And now I know, which I didn't know before, I can make a piston.
piston sleeve, and this is what I can make it out of, at least for this model rifle. So all in all, the Ruger Airhawk, um, I'm not too sure. I mean, I like the way it was made. Um, it's, they actually make it very solid. I don't know why the block had the big gap, but we're going to see. It's probably going to be okay. Now, the whole idea with the Ruger is I am definitely going to get a new spring for it. I know that you can, whatever, right, detune this. I want to detune it. I don't want full power. I want this thing to be accurate. But rather than use the same metal, a little later on, I'm going to up for a new spring with a better steel. Probably go with Vortec or, or JM, whatever, whoever has something available. Because I plan on keeping this $49 Ruger. I like it. I think it's going to be a real good shooter when we're done. I, I like the way it was made. Although a couple things I would have made different would have been one piece uh, barrel block. And I'm sorry, one piece barrel bolt, not the sleeve. And the other thing I would have changed is the... Um, I would have had the forks full size so there wouldn't be any gaps. But the rifle's not going to be flailing and wailing all over the place. I'm going to slightly detune it and smooth it real down. She's going to be a real nice shooter when I get done. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. This way I could uh, make a video of this instead of losing the pictures. Every time I make another post on something, um, then the pictures get lost. This here you can actually see, it's, you know, that's cut and notched. So this, this has to get smoothed out too. The inside of this piston once the sleeves out on both sides, that needs to be smoothed out. But all in all, for $49, the, the actual seal on it is wasn't bad. So I'm going to leave it. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you enjoy the little update on how to make a piston sleeve, or at least watch somebody make them one. If you ever need one now, you know you can make one too. This is Mike saying thanks for hanging out. Take care.